In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to animate the logo that we made in one of my previous tutorials with Illustrator and Element. So now I'm going to show you how to animate that so it looks cool like this. Ooh, smooth jazz. It's not jazz. There wasn't any music, actually. It was just sound effects and stuff. Um, so, if you want to learn how to make this, you can do some cool, like, if you had some cool music, you could make it, like, do cool stuff. Um, so if you want to see how to make this logo, or your own custom logo, using Illustrator, Photoshop, Illustrator or Photoshop, and After Effects, check out this tutorial. And if you'd like to see this demo in its entirety, which is the same way that you saw it here, um, but with sound effects and stuff, you can check that out here. Do that now. Or don't, because we're going to get into how to animate this. So we've got our logo. We've got um, these two elements in the same group. This is in its own group, and this in its own group. And let's animate it now. Click on Element. Go to Group 1. Actually, let's do, let's do the camera first here. If you press the um, quotation button or key on your keyboard, it'll bring up these guides or whatever they're called. I don't know if they're, I guess, mm, I'm going to loosely say guides. I'm pretty sure I'm completely wrong, though. Uh, oh, well and move the camera up so that awesome logo is kind of centered here and now let's go into element and group 2 okay so some different things that you can do let's go ahead and set some keyframes let's go one second down the timeline and keyframe position XY and position Z as well as Maybe rotation also, X, Y, and Z. And let's go back up to zero. And let's change X to 90 and Y to like negative 180. Let's see how that looks kind of like that, kind of lame, whatever. Let's fight about it. Now Z position, we're going to bring this past the camera. Go ahead and bring it up to the camera there and then put the Y down to kind of like center it there. And keep going past the camera and let's play that. So that looks like that, not very cool, whatever. Another cool thing that you can do with the text, even though this isn't a text layer, you could do it also with a text layer is if you go to particle look which is already open twirl that down and click on multi object and enable that then you can do rotation which will randomly rotate each character like that so let's set a keyframe let's undo that and set a keyframe where the other keyframes are well first just do rotation and also set a keyframe for scatter and click on element press U to bring up all the keyframes we're just gonna align these two right here let's go here like halfway down here so we can still see it see the text and pump these up a bit scatter get that to like here and rotation like this. Let's move these keyframes up to the beginning of the comp. So we see some random letters coming in there. Okay, and select all the end keyframes, right click and keyframe assist, and do easy ease in so that it'll slowly come to a stop and look a little better. Like that. 
And we're actually going to slow this down a bit. Take that to like two seconds, roughly. Oh, there we go. That looks good. Group three. And we're going to set all of our keyframes again here, like position Z, position X, particle look, click on multi object, enable that, and click on rotation and scatter, and also go up and click on rotation under the replicator as well. X, Y, and Z. Press U again to bring up all the keyframes, actually twice. And for this one, we are going to bring it back here a little bit. Like right here. Let's just bring it all the way over here. And we're going to go the other direction, like this. And X, Y doesn't really matter, I guess, in this case, since we're going backwards. And let's do 90, 180, or minus 180, you know, whatever you want to do. I don't care. Click on the rotation randomness in here. Bring that up a ways, and do scatter as well. And we're going to do another thing if we come here further down the timeline to where the other ones end and we're going to do particle look and opacity oh, force opacity so you're going to set a keyframe at 100 for that go to the beginning of the timeline and bring that down to 0 so that brings those letters in a little bit differently and select all of those keyframes, ending keyframes, even the ones you didn't use like X and Y and keyframe assist. Easy ease in. So now that'll look something like this. Okay. We'll go kind of in the middle of all these keyframes and in the null object, press P, set a keyframe. And then move equal distance past those keyframes. And we're going to move this down so that now the whole logo is centered. And we're going to do easy ease out and easy ease in. So that looks like that. So now, when we animate the icon, and let's set, let's go to the, when the animation will be done, let's set a keyframe for position X, Y, position Z, and rotation. We're not going to do multi-object for this, because that's crazy. Do X, Y, and Z, even though we probably won't use Z, oh well. Press U to bring up those keyframes. And let's go to where it starts. Let's do 90 minus 180. All right. And bring the Z position back. And do Y down a little bit. Like this. And we're going to change all of these ending keyframes to easy ease in. Like this. And let's see how it looks. There we go. Something like that. That's a little slow, though. Speed it up a bit. All 
Okay, so now let's add some detail or finishing touches. Let's do a new solid. You can keep it green, I don't care. It's gonna be the background. Color is irrelevant. And go to effects and presets and either type in a ramp, which is normally what I do, or go to generate ramp. And drag that onto that layer. Bring this to the bottom. I like to normally select the center part of my ramp because we're going to be changing it to radial right now. Ramp shape, change it from linear to radial. And let's change the black to like kind of like a darker gray and then the white to a black. Like this. So that looks good. Okay. Now, another thing to make this look cool is if you look at your keyframes, we could start off with this being, it's like start here and click T on your background to bring up the opacity. And, well, first let's, sorry. Let's go to the end where the animation is completely done. Set a keyframe, go back kind of between, like right here and set this to zero. So that kind of slowly fades in the background and just makes it look a little cooler. Actually, let's start that right at the beginning. Let's not be crazy here. So it starts out black, completely black, and then as the logo kind of flies in, the color fades in. It just looks nice, nice and cool. All right, and now let's add some depth of field from the camera. If you hold down the, if you click on the camera and press A twice, like so, it'll bring up all the camera options. Turn depth of field on, and let's change the focal distance. It's gonna take forever. Let's change it to like 500 to start. Just try to get that in focus. And let's do the aperture to be 100, just so it crushes the depth of field more. Keep going until you get that in focus. Hey, that's in pretty good focus. Awesome. All right, and so now when things get closer to the camera, it'll be blurred out at first, but it's going to take a lot longer to render. So that looks a little bit nicer. Okay, and another thing that we should probably add, go to after everything's animated here, Let's go ahead and take the depth of field off right now while we're working. And let's create a new light. Uh, let's try 100. Cone feather is fine. 180 is good. Be good. Good look. Okay. When working with lights and stuff, I normally like to change the view to four left so I can have better grasp of what's actually happening in 3D space. The final frontier is 3D space. All right, and let's go ahead and twirl this around. This light so it's facing the other direction, like so. And let's move it. Oopsies. Like this. And let's move it back in the Z space. Like so. Let's actually make this really bright. Let's do like 200. Just be crazy. Just be totally crazy. 
Kaboom. So now we got this nice lighting here on the back of it. Like that. And let's duplicate this light, but make this one not near as bright because that is crazy. And we're going to change the direction that this one is back to the front and like this and let's take this more to the center and down down a lot Go like this. I don't really like up lighting. Let's do. Let's take it back up. And let's go to the left. Like so. Far left there. There wasn't a political joke. It was just far left here. Like this. And let's point this back this way. And let's duplicate this one. And move it the other direction. All right, so we got some lighting here to make things look a little cooler. There we go. You could add some optical flares to this if you'd like. Let's turn the depth of field back on the camera. All right, and that kind of looks like that. So that's fun. Fantastic. Oh, wait, I don't think we did ambient occlusion. Let's do that. Let's add some ambient occlusion. How could we forget that? All right, so if you go into element, and close the groups and go to render settings ambient occlusion enable let's turn up the intensity a bit like that maybe radius up a little bit or no down a little bit that's good so the ambient occlusion just adds some shading and stuff which makes things look a little more realistic and beautiful so that's that that is how you animate a logo with element. You can mess around with all the different settings, there's tons of them, and you can create your own look that looks really look look full, looky, look looktastic, you know, whatever word you want to use or make up. Yeah, so that's it. If you like my tutorials, please subscribe over here maybe, possibly. Maybe down here. Right here maybe. I don't know. And you can check out some of my other tutorials right here down in this side here maybe over here I don't know we'll see we'll see what happens